Hey there, my name is Brian Sherman, and welcome back to Iconic Sonic Design. In a previous video, we talked about how melody is a powerful tool that brands use to sonically identify themselves. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important sonic identity assets that brands create, the sonic logo. A sonic logo is a brief two to four second sound that acts as the audio representation of a brand or experience. This is the same way that the graphic or animated logo acts as the visual representation of a brand or experience. One of the most recognizable and current examples of a Sonic logo is the Netflix Sonic logo. You most often hear it alongside their animated logo before their content. Millions of people watch Netflix, so this logo is very ingrained in people's minds through repetition. The advantage of the Sonic logo is that someone doesn't need to actually see the content to be able to align it to the brand or experience. This is why Sonic logos are used very powerfully in traditional marketing, like commercials on television. Even if you're in the other room not watching the commercial, you can still hear that sound and align it to the brand or experience. And more and more experiences are audio only, or without a visual component. Think about when you interact with your smart home speaker. Now there are two main types of Sonic logos melodic based logos, and sound design based logos. Melodic logos have a clearly defined melody or a sequence of notes. Sound design based logos may use harmony or chords alongside semiotics or representational sound effects. The Netflix Sonic logo doesn't have a clearly defined melody. It's comprised of just two hits and a harmonic pad. This makes the Netflix Sonic logo a sound design based logo similar to others like the HBO Sonic logo, which also doesn't have a clearly defined melody. The advantage of these type of logos is that they work with almost any type of content. Since they don't have a clearly defined melody, they won't often clash with any music that comes before or after them. A melodic based logo has the advantage of being very memorable, even without much repetition. Melodies get stuck on our heads quite easily. Some well-known examples of melodic based logos are the NBC Chimes, and the Intel Sonic logo. Whether a Sonic logo is melodic or sound design based, research confirms that repetition is the best way to get the general population to recognize that sound and align it with a brand or experience. This doesn't mean you need to be aggressive using a Sonic logo, just consistent. Once a Sonic logo is well established, usually after about a year or more, brands may want to create variation based on different content or different audiences. I recently had the pleasure of creating a variation of the Netflix Sonic logo for a series of theirs called After School. The idea was to reimagine the well-known Netflix Sonic logo for a younger audience. So I created a version that was reminiscent of class being let out with a school bell ringing. Another brand that has successfully used variation in their Sonic logo is McDonald's. The ba da 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 originally performed by Justin Timberlake, has become unique variations for different campaigns and commercials, using different instrumentation to match the music or the spirit of the commercial. <laughs> McDonald's can do this effectively because people heard the original for so many years that it's become ingrained in their memory. It's easy for them to recognize a variation. So what do you think? Which Sonic logo did you feel was the most memorable? Please let me know your favorites or any I didn't mention in the comments below. In future videos, we're going to explore Sonic logo creation in much more detail. From developing creative concepts, to the different ways to create iconic melody and unique sound design. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more. We'll catch you in the next one.